guys, welcome, welcome back, back to, to Animal, Animal Talk. Talk. I'm Michelle. And I'm Sophia. Today we have a special guest in the studio, Kyle Jans from the Humane Society. Hello. He brought his furry friend for us to talk, <laughs> interview. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Simon here. He's a, a three-year-old uh, Labrador Retriever mix, and you can tell he's, he's very relaxed right now and having a lot of fun. <laughs> he's so cute. Hi. So Simon came to us in, in August of, uh, of 2017, so he's been here with us for a little while, and he's been waiting for someone to adopt him. He spends a lot of time with a foster family and gets the opportunity to, to hang out with them and spend some time in the house, and he's just getting the opportunity now to come and meet you guys. He loves being with kids and loves being with, uh, with lots of family and having other dog friends as well. So what's Simon's uh, backstory? Like, how did he end up in the Humane Society? Uh, Simon was surrendered to us from the Humane Society. So oh. there's unfortunately sometimes what happens is there's people who, who can't keep their pet for a given reason. Sometimes they're, ab they're not able to keep them because they have to move to a, ho a new maybe apartment that they're not allowed to keep an animal in. And then other times they just might not be able to keep them because of their behavior or something like that. And so that was Simon's case it was his behavior um, he can sometimes get a little too excited when he sees other dogs and can bark a lot but we know that he's not doing it out of aggression or anything he's doing it because he's just so happy and wants to go and say hi to them and see them so really he's just such a, a gentle giant and a gentle spirit and we, we really love having him at the shelter but he we know we'd do a lot better in a, in a home instead yeah <laughs> Does anybody train Simon? Yeah, absolutely. We have a, a lot of behavior staff at the Humane Society and their sole or their sole purpose and their sole job is to work with dogs like Simon and they teach him all sorts of different tricks like sit and lie down and shake a paw and roll over as well as help him for when he does kind of react when he sees people from far away. Uh, they'll be able to uh, to train him to, to get Gaze's attention so that they're not, he's not going to pay attention to the dog but to the people instead so he gets lots of training from the both staff as well as the the volunteers who he spends time with in his foster home Right. Are, they, are there sometimes any difficulties training him? Uh, sometimes there will be uh, an odd case where, like for Simon, for example, he can get a little too excited when he sees a dog from far away. And so the difficulties come because he can't really control his reactions and his barks. But it's a pretty amazing to see what the behavior staff have done with him since he's arrived at the shelter because his reaction to other dogs is becoming... Uh, lessened and it's a shorter time span compared to how he was when he first arrived. So uh, lots of uh, positive reinforcement and that just means like when he does good things he, he gets kibble and lots of treats to be able to be rewarded for those good behaviors that he has. rescues animals as well, right? Yes, that's correct. We have uh, over 8,000 animals that come through our doors every year. Oh, and uh, how do you get notified when a uh animals in need of rescue? We have a, an intake department and the job of the intake department is to uh, receive the calls from people who are surrendering or if there's an animal that's in a, an emergency situation and so from there we're able to, to dispatch emergency responders who will go and sometimes rescue animals from dangerous situations so well, it's very common in the summer that people will leave their pets inside of vehicles during the summer but what a lot of people don't understand is that when they go in when they leave their pet inside it's almost like leaving them in an, in an oven it can get very hot and it can be very bad for the dog so we have people who will go and rescue those dogs from those situations and then we also have um, for example there was a cat that got stuck in a sewer down at Portage in Maine like the busiest intersection in Winnipeg and they actually had to go and stop traffic during rush hour so that they could remove the sewer grate and rescue the cat from the uh, from the sewer and be able to bring them into the shelter, uh, give them all the medical care that they needed, and then find that cat a home. 
Is there any risks or dangerous things about rescuing animals? Um, sometimes when an animal comes in, whether it's a cat or a dog, they can be very scared because they're in a new environment that they've never seen before and they might tend to react where they want to be defensive. So that is, there, is, there are some times where a staff member might get bitten or scratched but, uh, and so that does happen and something that we do have to be aware of. But at the same time, we, we also are very respectful of animals. So if there's a, a dog or a cat that comes in and it doesn't look like that they want to be around people for a bit, we respect that. And in order to prevent them from someone being injured, we give them some time to settle down before we, uh, before we would go and give them their initial health inspection and that type of thing. Um, where are some of the most dangerous places like rescue could take place? Um, it can it can really vary. There's uh, some areas of of the of um, Winnipeg where uh, we have might have staff who go in to be able to try and rescue these animals because they might have a lot of cats or a lot of dogs and where they can't be don't have the capacity or to be able to care for all of them. And so sometimes uh, our animal protection officers will have to go into those situations. Uh, but there also very specially trained to be able to handle those situations because sometimes uh, when you are rescuing pets you do have to deal with with people and so they do learn how to deal with those people as well. How do you adopt a pet? So after the pet has been uh, deemed healthy or ready to go for adoption, they go out onto our adoption floor. And from there, that's where people can come into the shelter and they can come and visit with the animals. And if there's one that catches their eye or their attention and they want to meet them, we have adoption staff. And they'll get them set up and get them introduced to the pet. And they read a file because we keep very detailed notes about all the pets that are in the, in the shelter. Uh, we know if they're going if the pet's going to be best for a family with kids or if they would be better suited for maybe a family without kids and so we help people be able to not only find a pet but uh, give them that perfect pet that they uh, that they really need and, and really deserve so we want to make sure that once the adoption goes through that the animal is going to stay in their home so we try and do everything that we can to help people out with that <laughs> is there a certain process that a person has to go through to get it? Yeah, so when people if are interested in, in, uh, in adopting from us, they have to come prepared with a couple of, uh, of, couple of items. They need a photo ID as well as um, if they do live in, a, in a, an apartment, for example, they need proof that they live in a pet-friendly residence so that they can get adopted. Uh, for dogs, for example, Everyone in the family needs to meet the, meet the pet first, so everyone who will be living with the animal, they have to be there during the adoption process as well. And if you're adopting a dog and you have a dog, already have a dog in the home, we also ask that you bring the dog down to the shelter as well, and then that way we can introduce the dogs to each other, and then that gives us a good idea if, they, if they'll be able to live together. Because just like people, uh, dogs and animals in general all have different personalities, and some of them might not get along with everyone else, but we always make sure that we do everything we can to make sure that that'll, that'll go smoothly. Um, how long have you had Simon at the adoption? Uh, Simon has been in the adoption since about August. So he's been, he's one of our longer term dogs right now. He's coming up on almost half a year soon. Are there any shots you need to, before you adopt? Uh, for the person or for, for, the, the, for the dog? For the dog. So, yeah, absolutely. Every animal gets their vaccinations before they get adopted and every animal's health is checked beforehand with a vet check. We have a lot of dedicated vet staff who make sure that they're all healthy and good to go before they are, before they are adopted. You guys have volunteers, right? We have over 700 volunteers at the Humane Society. And what do they do? Ah, they do a variety of things. So there are some uh, volunteers, for example, that will t take the dogs for a walks. So the dogs always get lots of um, opportunity to interact with people throughout the day, as well as uh, they, we have volunteers who are work with the cats and spend time with them, enriching them. So what they'll do is they'll spend time petting them and cuddling them, as well as playing different games with them and using toys to make sure that 
they are engaged. Those are two of the big things that volunteers do, but we have so many other volunteers who help run fundraising events for the shelter, uh, they help in our administration office, they help with the clinic staff and the vets st on, in the clinic side. Uh, we have so many volunteers and they do a lot of different things. <laughs> How old do you have to be to become a volunteer? 16 years old. So we do have, uh, we do ask that the, that everyone is at least 16, and we do have a lot of 16-year-olds and some younger people who do volunteer. I know we also have a lot of kids your age who are, would one day want to be a volunteer as well. And we also do have a, a lot of kids programming available. So for those kids who are not quite old enough to volunteer but want to learn more about animals and more about the Humane Society, we have uh, summer camps and spring break camps and school programs and all sorts of things. What is uh, Simon's like body language for like uh, when he's happy because I've heard that some dogs um, are with their tail but um, my friend Daniel's dog Daisy um, uh, when she's happy she often actually her tail is drooped down Interesting. and she usually her ears are with flapping up and down. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, every dog is going to be a little bit different in regards to the signs that they that they showcase. A dog with a wagging tail, like you said, that's obviously a very good sign that a dog is happy. Uh, a lot of, and for Simon, he'll, he'll wag his tail and sometimes, even though like he looks like he's not really very interested or anything, but he's very relaxed right now, and that's really a very good sign that he's very content. Uh, when he's in the house, like this is what he's like about 80% of the time. He just, he likes laying down near people and just being in their presence. So that's, uh, that's one of our favorite qualities about him. We always have a, a lot of different named cats and different named animals that come through, and some of them have some pretty interesting names. There was one cat that came through recently who was adopted, and her name was Princess Meowy Face Rocket Ship. <laughs> oh, thing, how she knew <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Thank you so much for having me, and it was it was just so great to be here. And you guys are absolutely welcome to come down to the Humane Society. I'd love to show you around sometime. I'd love to learn. Excellent. <laughs> happy happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. See you next time on TV Kids.